very aware this is something we will need to monitor uh, daily. Um, I think if you look at adults, they need monitor daily. You just have to look around restaurants and you see people not talking to each other. So having boundaries in place, you know, I've always put the boundary, we don't have our phones on the dinner table, whether we're outside in a restaurant, we're, you know, at home. But um, initially, yeah, she was, you know, a WhatsApp chat with her school class. They love that. They have so much fun on there. Um, she's been watching all these videos, like cooking videos, Videos, so she now makes better roast potatoes than me. Like she's, it's, there are benefits there. Uh, we just all hear about the doom and gloom stories, don't we? But um, you know, she's good at putting on makeup now. She loves watching tutorials. So I'm like, well, that would save me a fortune if I wanted to get my makeup done professionally. Keep it, keep it up, bon bon, and um, hopefully you can do it for me. So from a creative point of view and a social point of view, and also being able to contact her anywhere, or if she's at a sleepover, she can send a wee picture. Or if I was away abroad and she wasn't there because then there wee photo you know there's lovely aspects um, of it but obviously it does there's quite a lot of judgement there still what have you said to her Jojo what, what did, when you gave it to her what, what did you set in terms of rules and how did you explain it to her so I spoke about when people are nasty you know so if there's any nasty messages you see why are people nasty because they're, they're not happy about something when we're kind to people we're, we're kind you know we're feeling good about ourselves so we need to focus and if someone is being nasty and there's bullying let me know straight away or remove yourself from a page she you know she's she's taking herself out of pages if there's been like swearing or something because you know that's quite a big deal at 10 years old um so Having boundaries, um, obviously reminding her that you don't want to be that person that's just staring at the phone because they're very stimulating. And we spoke about how you can become very absorbed in it. And that's just not fun for people around you. So taking them if you're having a meal or you're catching up with a friend. Fair enough if you're playing on little games together and stuff, but try and have the balance. Um, and that is something that she's going to have to learn herself over the years. Um, spoke about, you know, things she can't watch. And if, she's, if something does come up on her video that's scary or not right or you know there's someone naked or something like that she needs to let us know straight away um because we've got all the settings there um so you would hope that she was safe but you hear things in the press again um of people seeing stuff when they shouldn't and um, so we spoke about that we just spoke about stimulation as well and um that she should only really be allowed perhaps an hour and a half a day just because her brain's still growing and sort of talk to her about how it can be a bit much for adults brains and, and kids brains and it can perhaps stop me from sleeping as well or you know it can just be a bit much um and that she needs to have hobbies that aren't on the screen, like at least one exercise. She loves swimming, so she has to sort of spend time doing that as well, proving to us that it's not just um, going to be something she's going to become addicted to. We sort of talk about how easy it is to get addicted to the screens, adults as well, and just on a kind of, not patronising her, but just saying, like, I know what it's like, you can get sucked into different videos, then an hour's gone and you've not got anything done. Um, so just talking to her about boundaries overall, I guess. Um, it's early so, days, and she's not listening to this, so you can tell me. Are you checking what she's been looking at at this stage? We, we do check. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll sort of come into a room and just say, can I just see what you're looking at? And then you'll get the whole, oh, because, um, you know, the... She might, it might just be, you know, a, a, a little YouTube star or something that she sees that she fancies or something, so she might not want to talk about that. So it's, yeah, we were trying to sort of um, keep tabs on that. Um, the, the key thing at the moment is, you know, she loves the cooking videos because you know what the algorithms are like. So if she's into, like, baking and cooking, they're showing her a lot of that. But I think she likes prank videos as well. Um, but Roblox is a very... Um, sort of a sociable thing they can all get in together and trade pets and tropical fish and pandas and all these kind of things so that seems to be taking up most of our time as well as the, the playing it's a whole new world there's nobody teaches you how to do this stuff jojo do they I know, it is. and it, it is a gamble, you know, when you, you read articles or you hear horror stories and you think, oh, am I doing the right thing? Um, but I have seen quite a lot of benefits as well, but I'm aware that it's something we'll need to manage. As adults, we need to manage because they are addictive for all ages. Um, I'm probably most worried about the kind of teenage years when you hear stories of bullying and, you know, the image and, and, and stuff. But as I say, I'm, I'm not 
going to worry too much catastrophizing it and just try and think about take it a day at a time you well know? you hope you know if you can set good habits just now that these will um you know that these will pay dividends when you when you get to that stage jojo stay right there here's linda blair uh who's a child psychologist joining us for this discussion as well linda good morning thanks for your time this morning Good morning. Is there such a thing as a right age when it comes to giving children a smartphone? They're all different, aren't they? But I mean, is there a rough time when you think this is the time to get good habits established? Not particularly. I think keeping an eye on when they're... Um uh, their peer group are getting them, honestly. I mean, they'll tell you, <laughs> do, do check with the other mothers. Um, they'll say everyone else has them. But um, I, I don't think so. I think it's much more, uh, Georgia was brilliant. I mean, I don't even know what I can add because um, it's about how she handles her phone uh, that is going to make the difference, not how many months and years the child is old. Um, the only thing she didn't mention, which I do think is important, is that the one time I would be quite restrictive is a bedtime because kids, uh, if they take them into their bedrooms, um, then they can get sleep problems after a while because it is addictive. It's a, she's right. It's addictive for all of us. The additional problem, of course, is that um, in kids with their growing brains, it also affects the brain, but it's addictive for everybody. Would you say monitoring uh, in the way that Jojo is, is a good idea, especially in these yeah. early stages? I think so, but not not secretly, like she does. You know, just walk in any old time and say, I'd like to have a look, um, if I may, please, even if she doesn't like it, just uh, randomly. But I think doing it behind their backs, uh, when they find out, which they will, um, they feel you don't trust them, and that sets up real bad vibes for adolescents. So, so that thing, though, about the example that you set is yeah. how they will behave. So, you know, it's not enough to sit down and tell them what they should be doing on their no. phones. You've got to show them by the way that you put your phone away or how you act with your phone. That's right. That's right. Particularly if your phone rings while you're talking to them, that you, if you pick that thing up in preference to them you've done some damage because they are realizing that they're not as important as a phone. Well, boy, do I want a phone then. So please um, behave responsibly yourself, keep boundaries, but most of all, uh, prioritize other people rather than the phone. Interesting. Linda, stay right there. Here's uh, Fevzi Tuckup. Fevzi is the host of the Gadget Detective podcast. He knows all about the tech side of this. Fevzi, good morning. Thanks for your time. Good morning. Pleasure. It's supposed to make our lives easier tech, isn't it? Has it made parenting <laughs> smartphones, has it made parenting harder or easier, do you think? It's a complete minefield, isn't it? It's tiger country. <laughs> I mean, the, even the science, the science on this is not in. We don't. We even don't know what harmful effects there are from the radiation from devices so you've got that i mean the the uk health security agency still says because of the uncertainty in the science uh, we have to take a precautionary approach and excessive use by children should be discouraged good luck with that um i note that 91 percent of 11 year olds in this country have a smartphone and even 44 percent of nine-year-olds uh, so it, it, this is this is very very difficult because you have technologies which are new not just the phones themselves but the services the social media platforms keep changing there is no way in the world that science scientific five-year lifetime scientific studies are going to keep up with the long-term effects of the usage of these these devices and these platforms so we have to use common sense i thought jojo was great i mean i've got a great mum but if i didn't I'd asked to be uh, adopted by her because her approach was 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 uniformly fantastic. I thought really sensible. Um, hard hard to uh, add much to that, but I think communication openness is the key. The, the fact that parents are powerful role models, and if if they see you misbehave with your phone, if they see you pick it up at, at, at the meal time, then, you know, you have no moral standing to tell them to do otherwise. So things like family contracts, a, a lot of talk is made about, oh, we can monitor the use using apps and we can restrict certain devices and so forth. But it, that at best is part of the solution. And if you're not monitoring the use and having that grown up discussion, even with a child, you know, an age appropriate discussion with the child about what the risks are and so forth, then, then these monitoring 
um, applications are not going to do anything. And in the extreme case, the child will pop the SIM out of one device, put it in another smartphone that they've managed to obtain for less than £40, and then you've lost all ability to know what's going on.